Hey guys, I'm alive and well now. It took me longer than I was hoping to to be able to use two hands again. I was hoping to be able to use two hands again, but now that I can, I'm ready to update everybody on that accidental cliffhanger. I meant to put up another post that night, thinking it would be a quick, the cops got him and I'm okay, type of situation. But no. Instead I got sent to the hospital and couldn't use my dominant hand for a couple of days. And in the meantime, some strange things happened. I'll start back where the last story left off. Hey shithead! Come out here! The scary biker, you know... You know what, let's just call him Biker. Biker yelled. Why would I do that? I yelled back, as I heard a bullet lodge itself in the wood of the desk. Luckily for me, this desk was for some reason built several inches thick. I don't know how thick, but apparently it was enough to stop a bullet from his gun. So then I can kill you! Why do you want to do that? Because you were a complete asshole and gave me very useful directions! Come again? You heard me, dick weasel! Get out here! I think I'm good. I laid back, staring at the top of the desk while he continued screaming to his heart's content. Occasionally the sound of his bullets hitting the desk made me jump, but eventually I got bored of that. My eyes were starting to feel pretty heavy, and it started to become hard to concentrate. I didn't understand why at the time. I had, I had gotten plenty of sleep that night, and I hadn't felt tired at all up until then. I guess it was just one of those days. It was a couple minutes later, right when I had decided that maybe taking a nap wouldn't be so bad, when I finally heard the sirens of an approaching cop car. From what I could tell, Biker Boy didn't realize that the cop car was coming for him. That, or he just didn't care. Over the sounds of his screams, I could barely make up the sounds of my friends slash babysitters slash guardian angels opening and stepping out of their cars. Sir, I'm going to have to ask you- Anna started before being rudely interrupted. You sniveling little shit sack! Get out here! Biker continued screaming. Sir, I'm going- she started again, a bit more assertive this time, but still not enough to get his attention. You. Insert insult I don't feel comfortable putting on the internet. STOP HIDING! LEAVE ME ALONE! I weakly yelled back. My, he my head spun as I tried yelling, like when you stand up too fast. NO! Sir, will you please? She was cut off by a quiet buzzing sound, a pained groan, and the thump of a biker-sized body dropping to the ground. <sighs> Thanks, Court. You're welcome, Court said, much more playfully than Anna sounded. But that's okay. It's not like anybody has been stabbed. Really the most criminal thing that the biker did? Really the most criminal thing that the biker did was waste my precious time. Hey Mason, you're in there, right? Anna asked, letting some of her concern come through her tone. Where else would he be? Court asked. I'm just checking. I'm right here, I announced, raising an arm up from under the desk. Why are you hiding down there? Court asked. He figured out that there's an opening in the panel. He's truly an evil genius. Glad we stopped him when we did. Court said, sarcasm seeping from every word she spoke. You know, you say that, but he's actually the first person we've arrested that's actually figured that out, Anna said. So he is, around these parts at least. Mason! Anna yelled. Yeah? Your arm! It's covered in blood! Court! I know, she said, running back to their squad car. I looked down at my arm as Anna walked up to me to get a better look at it. There was a long gash on the back of my arm. Blood had oozed out, completely soaking my newly torn sleeve. Oh, now I get it. It was all I could say before passing out. Okay, so now that it's been a couple of days since I was stabbed, and I'm able to type again, I think it's time that I get you guys back up to speed on everything that's happened. Biker was put away for assault. The reports keep coming in from all over the city that they've seen him around, but they always find him back in his cell every single time they get these calls. I was back to work the next day because, as I've mentioned, we are severely understaffed to stay open 24-7, but since I'm not able to drive, I've been getting rides from whoever else is scheduled that day. Luckily, not too much has happened while I was disabled. It was just the usual. Townies would come by with their usual bits. Like Hans Ledger. Hi Hans, I said. Hey, Mason, Hans said, his usual stupid smile on his face. That's me. I was hoping you'd top me. Off. He burst into laughter like the eight other times this interaction has happened. Sorry, Hans, but this isn't a gas station. I said in the most monotone way I possibly could. I know, that's the, that's the... He explained between his heavy wheezes. He slapped his knee and once he got his breath back, he wished me a good day and left. 
Oh, and through the recommendations of one of my very helpful commenters, I have requested that we get a panel installed over the opening so that I may close it at my discretion. So that's how my week has been. Just imagine that interaction a couple of times a day, every day, except for one. One that still confuses me even a week later. I stood behind the front desk. The setting sun and the fact that it was still winter made the night air a bit nippy. I had a big winter coat on over my cast. It was coming close to the time that I'd be able to remove it and be done dealing with it. Just the convenience of using my dominant hand was something I never truly appreciated until now. Even the last time I needed one of my arms casted, it was my left, and no one needs their left hand. I was reading a book while listening to some music on my phone when Z, which is his actual name, came up to me carrying a notebook that I never actually saw him without. Z is Matthew's brother and you may be confused as to why he would continue working at the place where his brother went missing, but hopefully this conversation will enlighten everyone. Hey Mason, Z said. That's me, I replied. Listen to this, do you remember when we saw those goats the other day? I thought back to the events of two days ago when Z and I had come into work and found what I believe is a found- the- I thought back to the events of two days ago, when Z and I came into work and found what I believe is a farm's entire stock of goats littered around outside the gate. After inspecting the goats, we noticed that every one of them had bleeding puncture wounds in their necks, and seemed to have been drained of all their blood. Or at least that's what we assumed by the fact that they looked like deflated balloon animals. We joked about the fact that there was some goat vampire going around, but then Z suddenly brought up the chupacabra, which was a pretty good theory. But after we replaced the night shift, who both said that they didn't see anything, we, may, we emailed Anna to see if they could take care of this. She and Court were not happy. So now that all the backstory is out of the way, let's get back to the current story. That also happened... in the past. Yeah, what about it? I asked, raising my eyebrow. Well, I think we were wrong about what did it. He handed me his notebook, which was already opened. I looked down to see that he had printed out and taped a picture of a decrepit arm bursting out of the ground. The image was surrounded by a lot of writing, little offhanded notes, nothing longer than a sentence. Too bad his handwriting is completely illegible. You think zombies did that? I asked, taking a wild swing at what I thought it was. No, he said, gesturing to the top of the page where a single blob of granite sat, which I assumed could be a word. Can't you read? No, I've told you before that I'm illiterate. I have these books with me all the time to make people think that I can. Oh, right, dude. Sorry. He took the notebook back from me. Here, let me read it to you. He cleared his throat before reading, Strigoi, zombie-like vampires that hail from Romania. You think Romanian zombies left all of those goats? I asked while fists bumping in my mind. Not exactly. They're basically people that die before their time and are brought back and act like vampires after that. Like, you know, the whole sucking of the blood thing. All right then. Why do you think that we're dealing with the Romanian vampire zombies instead of the chupacabra, you know, the monster that's known for sucking goat blood. Because I found a bunch of goat tracks and what looked like human tracks out in the red rocks, near where it looked like something or some ones were dug up. He said, doing his best spooky voice. Excuse me, a voice interrupted. I looked away from Z to regard the newcomer. He was about my height with short, neatly trimmed black hair. He wore a thin black coat over a white t-shirt and dress pants that looked like they had just had all the wrinkles ironed out recently. Oh, sorry, are you looking to rent a room? I asked. Oh, sorry, are you looking to rent a room? I asked. No, thank you. I was hoping you'd be able to help me get in contact with the owners, he said. He has an English accent. I can give them a call for you if you'd like. I picked up the phone off the receiver. Thank you, but that's all right. Would you be able to give me their number? I was taken back by his politeness. I'm sorry, but they don't want people calling their personal phones, and they don't have a business phone. Do they perhaps have an email that I could contact them by? Not as far as I'm aware. He couldn't hide what looked like a mixture of shock and disappointment. Well, uh, well, alright then. Is there any way to contact them? No. They like it when they can contact people, but not the other way. Very few people can talk to them when they need to. If you're looking for a job, I can help you with that. I'm actually a manager. I doubted that he was here for that. By the looks of his outfit, he made way more than I could pay him here. You're a manager? But you can't even read, Z interjected. I'm not gonna lie, I forgot he was here. I turned to Z. You didn't know that I'm a manager? No, he chuckled. I looked back to Accent, who was busy eyeing up the dirt at his feet. 
I could tell from the look on his face that he was wrestling with something in his mind. He looked back up to me and said, I appreciate the offer, but I'm not currently looking for a job. He pulled a card out of his pocket and slid it through the panel. If you could, would you mind giving them my card? I would really appreciate it. I can do that for you. I picked up the card. It was a pleasure talking to you. To you both. He nodded to us and started walking away. Down the side of the road in the opposite direction of town. I looked down at the card, reading it. David Evans. Underneath his phone number was listed. That guy. He's... Interesting. That guy was pretty weird, said Z.